last video, we learned how to install NLTK and we also learned that we need to install some other packages that do not come pre-installed in NLTK and we explored some of the collections such as the corpus collection where there are multiple corpuses available for us to experiment our pre-processing techniques and build something useful upon them. So in this video, we're going to be exploring text tokenization. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two types of text tokenization. Um, the first one is the sentence-based tokenization where we have a corpus available and we segment that corpus into um, some meaningful sentences. And then we have a word-based tokenization where we have a sentence and then we split that or segment that sentence into meaningful words or constituent words. Let's look at sentence-based tokenization in a bit more detail now. Consider this corpus. Now if I ask you to segment this corpus into meaningful sentences, what would you do? Well, there are multiple approaches to be followed here. You can either use a delimiter such as the semicolons or the period or the carriage returns to segment the sentence because it looks simple. But this approach is not efficient and will not apply to almost all the textual data and this might, not, this might actually fail on some other corpuses. Or you could think of an approach where you could use regular expressions to, seg to define a pattern and then segment the sentence. But still, regular expressions does not fit well. And this is where the sent underscore tokenized module of NLTK comes in. And we'll be exploring, in this uh, video, we'll be exploring three types of modules uh, in that, uh, that can help us perform sentence-based tokenization in Python using NLTK. And those are sent underscore tokenize. That is an intelligent tokenizer and can work on almost all the languages and we'll see how that works. And then we'll also be explore, exploring some of the old or traditional techniques such as the regular expression tokenizer or the, the punct uh, expression tokenizer. So let's get started. All right, so now we will be moving on towards um, text tokenization. So I'll just go ahead and share this notebook with you guys as well. So you can find the link of this notebook in the description and you can follow along, right? So yeah, so let's get started. First of all, in order to um, load the sentence tokenization module in from our NLTK library, um, we can just go ahead and like type in from NLTK import sent underscore tokenize, right? And this is the library that we will be using to um <clears throat> to, pro to perform sentence tokenization. And this is uh, this is the basic li library that we need to use, right? But um, again, NLTK has um, some wide range of tokenizers available, but the most widely used one is this one, because, and there are many reasons for that. Uh, the first one is that this sentence tokenizing, this sentence tokenize class provides us uh, with with a very powerful tokenization that can be performed on all all types of languages, not just English. So if you are if you if you are trying to tokenize some Chinese text or German text, this tokenization can work on those as well. And this is a highly intelligent tokenizer. So um, the the approach is very simple. So you might be using some. Um, <clears throat> in, there are many ways to tokenize a sentence. You might be using some delimiters such as a semicolon. Or uh, or or a or a carriage return to check whether um whether there's a new line so you have to divide the sentences but this tokenizer ha has been trained intelligently so it knows where uh, where to end a sentence and start another sentence and that is why it's 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 the most recommended to be used tokenizer uh, when you're using an LTK okay so we will be, we will be exploring this right away now what I will do is I will just go ahead and create a tokenize uh, tokenizer variable and store this the instance of sentence tokenize in this and now we're good to go right so what I will do now is I'll just go ahead and pass my text inside this tokenizer and we already have we have already loaded Alice here and this is the raw text that we have in our environment so what I will do is I'll just go ahead and type in Alice underscore uh, sentences and I'll just uh, pass in um, the tokenizer that I have I've created and I'll just pass in the text so the way you'd actually pass in the raw text into your tokenizer is by this by using this particular property which is text equals and then we can just pass in our text Alice right so as soon as you run this you can see it actually um, it tokenized this uh, whole raw text and so if you want to make sure that it actually actually um, segmented our raw text into individual sentences we can just go ahead and print it out right away to just see what changes were done so you can see that we can instantly see a list of sentences and each uh, each of these um, sentences are actually um, 
tokenized uh, on the basis of some uh, approach and you can see it is not use it is not following a very particular approach such as uh, using carriage returns to to identify where the sentence ends it's actually intelligently uh, segmenting the sentences without any problem right and to actually find out how many sentences are there in this particular um, list we could just use the uh, the length attribute of python to just instantly find out i'll just go ahead and say um, total sentences and I'll just pass pass in length of our sentences, and you can see it says one one thousand six hundred and twenty five sentences. So yes, of course, it actually um segmented uh, all the sentences, and we had um a total of a lot of characters. But now you can see it's how easily how easy it is to actually um tokenize um using an LTK, and we were instantly uh, we were able to instantly get the sentences um from this particular this particular uh, module sent tokenize now so now we know how to basically um tokenize the the words now it's time to actually understand um how we can use um this tokenizer on other other languages as well so um as i mentioned that we have a lot of different uh, raw text uh, in our corpus um corpus uh, corpus collection here so we can uh, now i will just go ahead and import some german and german um text so that we can see that if this tokenizer really works on other languages as well so what i'll just do, go, go ahead and do is i'll just say euro um euro Pearl raw and this is this is basically um this is basically a, a a class where you can get or fetch all the all the text in german files and i'll just load this now and what i'll do and I'll just go ahead and fetch um, our German text as well. So I'll just go ahead and say German, German underscore raw, and I'll just pass in Euro for raw. And here uh, we, we, we use the same approach, but instead we'll just go ahead and say German dot raw, and I'll pass in the file ID. Again, you can find all of, you can find the reference to these file IDs in the documentation of NLTK, and I'll actually link the documentation to you guys for you guys to, uh, down in the description below, so you can check the documentation out, right? And once we actually load these uh, files here, um, I'll just go ahead and try to actually print this out exactly what is inside this, and you can see this raw text is basically in German, and of course this is a very a very great way to experiment whether this tokenizer will work on the German text as well. So now what I'll do is I will use the same um, approach to convert um, our this, this German raw text into um, sentences, right? So I'll just go ahead and pass in German, German sentences, and here I'll pass in German. And then, since we are loading um, the German language inside this model, um, inside this tokenizer, I will also specify the language that is German, right? So I'll just go ahead and say language. So we can pass in this attribute here. And this parameter specifies that which language are we passing in. So it knows um, what kind of tokenizer that has been trained on German language to use to uh, effectively tokenize this whole text. So when I do that, you can see it actually tokenized it. And now if I just print out this, um, of, of course, I don't really understand German, but if some of you guys know German, you might understand it actually worked um, well on the German language as well. And this actually gives you an idea that this sent tokenizer uh, class is actually very powerful and it can be used in uh, on many languages except English, um, other than English. Uh, so yeah, of course you can all, all, all experiment a lot of different languages, and of, uh, if you have if you don't have um, data for other languages, you could just um, explore this corpus, and it might actually give you a lot of samples to to work on with, right? Or you could just load load in your own samples. All right, so this is basically um, a, a ba very basic introduction to to the to the to the to the sentence tokenizer module that we have available in our NNTK, and now we will explore. Um, we will explore another so, uh, tokenizer, which is um, punct sentence tokenizer, and I'll just go ahead and try to import that into our li library by. Um, so I will just go ahead and try to import that into our environment by typing from NLTK dot tokenize import punct. So this is the punct sentence tokenizer, and <clears throat> this uh, tokenizer is basically. Um, uh, is basically a straightforward tokenizer and you can use this tokenizer to um to tokenize sentences based on the punctuations and some other um some other delimiters that uh 
and it's not very efficient obviously it's not as efficient as the sent tokenize and this is not very commonly used but of course you can use this one as well i'm just showing this one so that you know there are different uh, ranges of tokenizers and you can use each and every one uh, based on the need and on the type of need that you have for tokenizing or pre-processing the text so now what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and first of all create an instance of punk sentence tokenizer um punk sent tokenizer right and i'll just go ahead and say um punk sent tokenizer and let's call this one here inside here and then i'll just go ahead and load um so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and try to actually type in some random text like um I'll just say and you can see that there are actually um this is one sentence and this is another sentence and then this is another sentence so um you can kind of think of this as um as a as a raw text which has a lot of punctuations as well and this is how commonly how you would get uh, the, the textual data in right so i'll just written that now what i'll do is i will use a punct sentence tokenizer to tokenize this text as well and i'll just go ahead and say sample underscore sentences equals punct sent and i'll just pass in the text which is and you can just pass in the text directly here like this and when i learn Okay, so it says the object is not callable. Why is that so? Um, oh, oh, so you have to obviously you have to use the tokenize, um, tokenize, tokenize function here to actually pass in the fun sentence. And now you can th you can see it actually works. So now what I'll do is I'll just try to print this out by saying print and sample sentences, and let's see what happened. And you can see that um, it worked really well by actually seeing the punctuations and it actually was able to t segment these two sentences. Hey, how are you? I am good. I have been working on my NLP project and it actually tokenized these two sentences very well. Awesome. So you can see this is another tokenizer that we can use. But uh, again, we have... Uh, we have a lot of tokenized uh, sentence tokenizers uh, in NLTK, and it totally depends like which one do you really want to use, essentially. And I just I just showed you this one, but you can obviously go for any other approach. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll just try to load up uh, another tokenizer, which is the reg the regular expression tokenizer, uh, and the way you call the regular expression tokenizer in NLT NLTK is by calling um, Reg X, you can see it has so under the same uh, same class uh, NLTK uh, tokenize we have a rich express re regular expression uh, tokenizer and this is how you actually call this so I'll just run this now and this tokenizer specifically uses regular expressions uh, to tokenize the sentences so we can specify a pattern in uh, like how we really need to set a uh, to tokenize a sentence and we can we can specify for example um if we need to tokenize um a particular sentence if it ends with a carriage return or if a sentence ends with a number or we can actually specify a, a range of ways uh, different sort of patterns to extract um the sentences out of a of, of a big text and this is obviously a very uh, this is obviously a, an approach there where you need to understand the text yourself and specify a pattern and that's that is exactly why it's a bit harder and it's a bit um it's a it's, it's a lot of work to uh, to actually create a regular expression yourself and that is exactly why people prefer to use um sent tokenize uh, module which actually does all of these things automatically and doesn't really uh, require you to explicitly specify a regular expression to, to tokenize a sentence so what i will do is i will actually go ahead and create a simple regular expression um all right so what i've done here is i've created a basic um to reg regular expression pattern here and i know this might not seem very very um familiar to you guys and if especially if you don't know how regular expressions really work and this is a, this is a pattern that I've grabbed I've grabbed on from um, from from the documentation and uh, and of course I was I actually experimented a bit uh, if this would really work or not uh, but of course you could uh, you could actually change this if you really have some knowledge about regular expressions um, it's not really necessary but of course if you really want to experiment this you need to know what regular expressions are and how they really work so this pattern right here is supposed to capture um, I, I capture a sentence like this um, if a sentence ends with um, with an exp exclamation mark or a question mark or a carriage return it should be able to um, it should be able to um, to basically uh, 
basically segment the sentences based on, on, on those particular delimiters, right? So what I'll do now is I will actually go ahead and create a basic tokenizer by um, using the NLTK's um, regex tokenizer that we have just imported here, regex tokenizer, right? And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, create a regex underscore send, and here I'll just call in my regex tokenizer, and it is basically going to be, yeah, this is the one regex tokenizer, and then what I can just pass in is the pattern that I just created above like this, and I'll just pass in my send, my, my pattern that I've created here, and then finally I'll just pass in gap equals true, and this is basically what I found in the documentation. And then we can just we can just type in our sample sentences the way how we did here. But right here we will just use the the different type of tokenizer, which is regex tokenizer, that the instance that we have created here. And then finally we will use its function tokenize to pass in our sample text, which is this one sample text. And uh, I'll just try to remove this one. And yes. So now what I will do is I will just say sample text and run this. All right. So now when I've done that, I will just print out and see what uh, what we have, what what it did. And you can see that um, okay. So I think it was not able to reload the the new sentence. And yeah, now you can see it kind of works. The it kind of works in the same way how our sample um how our punk sentence tokenizer worked um and it, it it did a good job because of the because i was able to get i was able to write a, a good regular expression for this and this this expression actually matched the sentence very well and that is exactly why i was able to segment this sentence um easily uh but again you can see that it, this 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 method is actually a little bit hard to understand and obviously this requires the knowledge of regular expressions as well so that is why it's very it's highly recommended that you guys use the sentence tokenizer to tokenize a sentence which makes it really easy so i think um that is the, the, these are the types of tokenizers that we have studied so we have studied the sent tokenize we have studied the the punk sentence tokenizer and reg reg regular expression tokenizer so we just learned that we have multiple interfaces for sentence-based tokenization in NLTK, which can be used to very easily perform segmentation over a corpus and divide the corpus into meaningful sentences. Now, just as we did sentence-based tokenization, we can also perform word-based tokenization in NLTK.